Good evening, guys. <clears throat> Good evening once again. This is Dr. Paul serving humanity through medical education. Tonight we are going to talk about warfarin toxicity. As always, visit our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net. That is www.usmlevideos.net, where we have posted hundreds of videos. Our videos focus only on the most important topics that you must know for USML examination. So. Please take some time to visit our website and uh, browse through our videos tonight. Tonight, I want to stress a few minutes about warfarin. You see, warfarin is one of the most commonly used medications in the world. As people's habits are changing, nowadays, people's work habits has changed dramatically. So many people just sit and obesity because of the war weight many people are not moving and increased industrialization even in uh, countries like China and India people use it to go to work on bicycles nowadays most people are going in their cars and buses so Immobility has increased dramatically and people are getting deep venous thrombosis at unprecedented rates and surgery, old age, hospital stay and uh, increased levels of uh, claudication in the feet. These are all combining as factors to increase the incidence of deep venous thrombosis and uh, subsequently to be started on warfarin. So many people on warfarin, for example, if they have an attack of a deep venous thrombosis, we keep them on warfarin with, with an INR target between 2 and 3. If they are on a mechanical heart valve, we keep them between INR 2.5 to 3.5. And most of these patients, we start them like uh, 5 milligrams of comedin or warfarin and many people they attain their target INR level within a few days or few weeks like uh, 2 to 3. The problem is even with the long term control sometimes bad things happen to good patients. Their INR go like crazy. I mean, some of these people's INR will be like 10, 15. What in the world can you do about it? That's the topic of tonight. So every time you should look at INR, but always have some suspicion. Because the most common cause of a falsely elevated INR is what? it is heparin in that sample. If you have heparin in the blood sample, that can falsely elevate the INR. So always check your INR again if you have doubts. That's a very good thing. These many, many people with INR more than six, they start to develop symptoms. And uh, some people who have a diarrhea, worsen heart failure, fever, or uh, heart failure, these patients, they, their INR might go beyond sex. Now, let us talk about uh, what are the most important uh, things we need to remember. Some people with vitamin K deficiency, they will have high INR, even before you start them on comedin their INR will be high. For example, if a patient has INR 4, what would you do? All you have to do is to skip a dose of warfarin. Skip the dose, next dose, that's all you have to do. And check INR again. But if it is like uh, 6, or 7 or 8 or 9 
what would you do in those circumstances first you should see whether the patient has any bleeding does he have any bleeding if the patient does not have any bleeding all you have to do is to stop the medication temporarily stop the medication for a few days and then check the INR again and even if that does not help then give him some oral vitamin K you see now there is uh, there, there used to be some confusion what should I give subcutaneous vitamin K or intravenous vitamin K or oral vitamin K the best thing is oral vitamin K when there is no bleeding because oral vitamin K is as effective as intravenous or subcutaneous vitamin K on the top of it intravenous vitamin K is associated with anaphylaxis so on any given day you can give vitamin K by mouth in these patients and if the INR does not come down you can repeat the dose again and now the problem is what you are going to do when there is bleeding for example patient's INR is like 10 and uh, he also has bleeding in those cases stop warfarin and start vitamin K infusion that's one thing and if you don't get any results like warfarin is just shooting up patients has severe life-threatening bleeding then stop warfarin start vitamin K start fresh frozen plasma those are the ind indications you can also order concentrate 7 for these patients concentrate 7 it has a, a direct role in inhibiting warfarin so those are the main important points so let me give you a recap of these things for example patient has an INR of 4 or 5 just skip the next dose of warfarin that's all you have to do if the patient's INR is like uh, 6, 7, 8 nine just stop the medications few days and restart it again after checking INR again if the patient's INR is like uh, 10 then stop warfarin temporarily and give vitamin K by mouth and if there is bleeding stop warfarin and give a slow infusion of vitamin K and if the if a patient has severe bleeding then stop warfarin and start patient on IV infusion of vitamin K and also fresh frozen plasma or concentrate factor 7a so those are the most important things and I am sure you will get some of these questions in your examination because I did. I came across bunch of questions on USML examinations on warfarin toxicity and uh, I hope you prepare well for this and uh, as always visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net and uh, post your comments. If you have any questions post them and if you think that I omitted some important points even if you contradict me, feel free to comment on our videos, on our blogs or websites. And again, that is www.usmlevideos.net. Thank you. God bless you. Have a nice day. And uh, I wish you all the best on your examination.